Well, welcome back to Paul's Railroad, everybody. Today, we're going to start something, a whole new segment that I'm calling Off the Rails. Now, what this is going to be about, guys, is we're going to do some reviews of products. We're going to do um, some how-tos as far as how to use some tools that we use for our modeling. Uh, but more importantly, I would like to hear from you guys. I want to hear your questions that you may have that I can answer on this channel. And I would love, love for you guys to send in me pictures of what you're working on. I want to see your layouts. I want to see your buildings. I want to see your rolling stock. Whatever it is that you're working on, guys, send it to me. Send it to me with a little bit of a about, about what you're doing with it so I can talk about it on my channel, guys. There will be a link in the description below to the email where you can send me your questions, send me your photos, so we can actually communicate and so I can post your guys' stuff on my channel to share with everybody else. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, guys, is, you know, my videos are a month to sometimes two months apart. That is because everything that I do on this channel as far as the buildings that I'm weathering, the rolling stock that I'm painting and weathering, 98% of everything I'm doing, guys, is my own design. So there is a lot of behind-the-scenes time taken up with designing a structure or designing a piece of rolling stock in a 3D program and or a 2D program now that I have a laser. So I spend literally weeks upon weeks designing these items before I even produce them on my 3D printers or on my laser cutter. And guys, a lot of times I mess up or I see something I don't like, so I have to go back and make changes and reprint them. So there's a lot of time behind the scenes that you guys don't see of me getting this stuff ready to even make a video on. That's why it takes me so long to create videos, guys. So I'm hoping to use this off the rails as a filler in between so we can keep communicating back and forth. So with that being said, let's get started on today's first episode of Off the Rails where I'm going to review a product that was sent to me by a company named Picasso. Alright, here it is. This is the item that was sent to me by the company Bucasso. Now it was sent to me for free for a review. And let me uh, say this. This is going to be a completely honest review. And I told them that right up front. Guys, you know, the only thing I have to me that matters is my name. Other than my family, of course. But, you know, in 10, 15, 20 years, nobody's going to remember how much money I have or how many trains I have. But if you come to my town and you see my last name, people are going to know the name. And you guys know how that is. So, integrity is the most important thing to me, especially when it comes to this channel and in life in general. With that being said, let's get started in this review of this item. <laughs> All right, so why did a company send me an item for free to review? Well, well, let me pan to the right here just a little bit. As you can see, my tool organization skills are severely lacking. They said they saw that and they thought that their product would be a perfect fit for me to help me out. So, with that being said, let me give you a little backstory about the company Picasso and how these came to be. All right, folks, let's talk about the backstory of this company real quick. I don't have a lot of information, but what I do have, I'd like to share with you. The company's name is Picasso, as I'd already mentioned. And from what I understand, the company is owned by a gentleman named Taro, or Taro, I'm sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly. And it is a technology company. It's not a modeling company or even a woodworking company. Technology. But the owner is a modeling nerd, just like the rest of us. And like many of us, his work area was a bit of a mess too, a little disorganized. So he got with his R&D team and they designed this tool organizing. This is their GK, GK1 tool organizing unit, along with eight other units along similar lines to help get modelers organized. Now the company sent me this one here because they saw like I showed you how messy my tool area was to check out. But I thought it was kind of cool that it's not even a modeling company but the guy is a big modeling nerd like the rest of us. So that is the backstory of how this product came to be. Now let's take a closer look at it and talk about the construction of it. Alright folks let's talk about the construction of this just real quick. This is made from MDF. And even though I may not be a big fan of MDF, of course I grew up in the age of particle board stuff, which was really cheap. This, however, is not cheap. 
This is a very dense MDF. You can tell there's an awful lot of glue or resins or whatever they're using to make MDF these days. It is very dense. This unit is quite heavy for its size. The construction method is tabs and slots. Now they say you do not need any glue. And for the most part, I will agree with that. This side in particular, after I had all of these little tabs lined up and started in these slots, I had to lay this unit on its side and take the palm of my hand and slap this thing or smack this thing or pound this thing or whatever you want to say together. And folks, let me tell you right now, I was not gentle. This unit was given to me for free for an honest review. I figured, you know, I'm not the only person who's gonna pound on this thing and put it together. So if I break it, I wanna see if it's gonna break. And guys, I didn't even mar it. I did not even knock a quarter off any of these tabs, nothing. Somewhat impressed there. Now, as I said, they say no glue is necessary. And for the most part, I will agree, this is pretty solidly built. However, this side only has a few actual locking tabs, actually only really three. These don't lock super tight down there. And as you can see, this comes apart fairly easily. So I will be gluing this side together for certain and possibly even gluing some of the other portions together. These, however, are not meant to be glued in, guys. Uh, these are so you can hang rolls of, of tape or what have you. Just pull out this slide here, this side there, slide it on, man, and stick your tape in there and hang her up or throw on, you know, some tweezers or pliers or whatever you got. It's what this is meant for, so do not glue those in, guys. Now, with that being said, like I mentioned, this is made from MDF. And I had one issue with this. Actually, I had an issue to the point to where I was honestly going to give this product a bad review. But something happened. Alright, so what happened that almost caused me to give this a bad review? Well, just so you guys know, my workshop is in the basement of my home. And I live in Northeast Ohio. As a matter of fact, my workbench is probably about eight feet away from my gas fired furnace. And as most of you who know who own gas fired furnaces, when they're running, they suck all the moisture out of the air. Now, with that being said, I also have a dehumidifier because my train layout is down here. All my modeling supplies are down here. As a matter of fact, another hobby that I'm really into is leather working and I have a lot of money wrapped up in leather hides that are down here. So I keep the moisture content in my basement roughly 30 percent that's in the summertime in the wintertime that drops down to probably eight to ten percent because of the furnace running so when i first took this out and i first put it together it was still very cold out and my furnace was running and the moisture content in this basement was extremely low now fast forward a couple of days after i had this put together it got nice out the furnace shut off, it's April, we got some rain, the moisture content in my basement came up to about 30% like I usually keep it at. And this base warped. And it warped pretty substantially that I saw it as I was walking up to it, as I was sitting on my workbench just like this, I noticed it and it rocked. And as you can see now, it's flat again. So. Kudos to the particle board that they used. It actually went back to flat after it reacclimated to the current temperatures. So, no bad review on that aspect of it. I thought we were going to have a problem. I am somewhat impressed with this particle board. Again, not a particle board, board fan, but this stuff is kind of impressive. Now, you can find links to these products down below they sell these on Amazon and they are affiliate links I'm not gonna lie to you guys I get a little kickback from Amazon not from you guys it's all free for you guys but Amazon gives me a little bit of money if you guys buy something that I sent you to this GK1 currently is not in stock as of the time of this video they have only three units that I can find in stock so I linked to one of those if you click on that link go to that unit it'll show you pictures of everything that they do have for this line. So go check it out. But before you go check it out, let me get this thing loaded up with my tools and let's see how it looks 
as it's supposed to, as a functioning storage unit. All right, folks, well, here is my new Bucasso tool rack all assembled and kitted out with all of my tools. I did make a couple of additions to it. As you can see on this side, I hot glued on a magnet in order to hold my scissors. And I also hot glued on a magnet on this side to hold my magnetic tray, which currently has some end scale trucks and wheels in it. Now let's back up and take a look at this space. All right, if you remember, over here, I had two of these round paintbrush holders, one full of these paintbrushes and one full of a lot of these tools, a lot of these tweezers, all that good stuff, sitting here taking, taking up all of this space. And back here where this is sitting, I had two of those white trays. And guys, trays suck, all right? Boxes, trays, they all suck. Why? Because things got thrown in there. I could not see them. I didn't know where they were and I misplay stuff constantly with this. I can see everything that I have. Everything is at my fingertips. Now I have things labeled so I know what they are. This is pretty awesome, guys. Let's just take a look at how much more room I now have on my workbench. Oh, and there's my two printers, guys. My Ender 3 Pro and my Creality LD002H resin printer. I love my printers, guys. Those are awesome. Do a lot of work with those, but we're not talking about that. Let's get back to this. You know, I mentioned at the beginning of this, I was a little concerned because of it being MDF. But you know what? I kind of like it. Easily painted, easy to hot glue things onto it. And like I said, you know, this base, even though it had warped because of the humidity change, it went back to flat. Now, I didn't do anything to it, I just let it sit. So it's not cheap stuff, it's pretty good stuff, guys. I hope you liked the video. I hope you are interested in this product as I am. And actually, um, you see all my paints back there? If any other manufacturer is watching and you want to send me something to help me organize those, send it my way, guys. I'll give you a review too. Go to Amazon, link is in the description below. Check out the products from Bucasso. See if there's anything there that you could use and get one. Give it a chance, give it a try. I actually like this product. And like I mentioned, I think it's pretty cool that the person that created this is a modeler just like us guys. All right, with that, thanks again for watching and happy railroading everybody.